And uh, as you can already tell by the case, it's an Ibanez Prestige case. So uh, yeah, we can expect cool things to come out there. <laughs> So here we go with another guitar. So as you might have noticed, this one I did not unpack in any way. That is the reason for this is because uh, as you might already be able to tell, I'm from Germany. Germany is not that big of a country and uh, I'm fortunately able to pick up a lot of guitars that I buy. Um, just gonna buy them on eBay or buy them through uh, some kind of Craigslist style stuff and uh, yeah, pick them up because usually the ways are not too far so that it's worth. Uh, that is why in this series you're going to see a lot of guitars that are actually, yeah, already unpacked. But I think the interesting thing is the guitars, not the way they are packaged in any way. So, let's dive right into this. So this episode is going to be interesting because we are fully Ibanez, got three Ibanez, and uh, every single one of them comes from a different country. Ain't that cool? Okay, so we're going to start off with the most uninteresting guitar, I'd say. Also the newest of those, which is an uh, Ibanez Premium guitar. Oh, Gibble is sort of freaking out here. So an Ibanez Premium guitar. And uh, let's unpack it. Some of you might already know those Ibanez soft cases that come with those Premium guitars. And uh, this one is yeah in a little bit of rough shape, I'd say. I mean, looks okay, It's some, something was glued here and uh, this zipper is a little bit broke, but um, well, that's pretty much it. So, what is this? Oh, also I should mention, we got uh, today we got three Ibanez signature guitars, so it's even more special. Especially to me, because all those three guitarists are heroes for me. So look at that. Yeah, who already knows what kind of guitar this is? You can read it here. PGM. So it's a Paul Gilbert model. This is a PGM 80P. P stands for premium because it's from a premium setup. And uh, this is a guitar that I like a lot. So what it actually is, uh, as you some of you might know, Paul Gilbert these days um, mostly plays his uh, Fireman, Ibanez Fireman. And uh, the Ibanez Fireman was something he designed. It's, it's actually ripped off from the Paul Stanley Iceman and it's just turned around. And the thing is, when you know the old PGMs, which were his first signature models, those were usually white with the black app holes, or it's actually not holes, it's just black hat on there. But um, uh, black F holes and uh, usually a stop uh, hardtail. And uh, yeah. So, and that thing is, which why I thought it was interesting, is pretty much a blend between those Icemans or Firemans and uh, his uh, earlier PGM models. And that is why I think it was pretty cool. So, what do we have? Classic RG style headstock or Ibanez in general. Got a rosewood fingerboard. Looks kind of cool. Got DiMarzio vintage style humbuckers that I actually also found in the uh, Fireman models. And we got this. What is this? It's Wilkinson Roller Bridge. That is actually not original. The guitar came with the vintage style. Vin excuse me. Wilkinson vintage style bridge. Like uh, Fender guitars have also six point setup. But uh, those bent vintage style saddles. But the owner said uh, that it, everything about it was terrible. Uh, so he changed out it with this one. This is actually not that much more expensive. I think it's 20 euros more if you buy it as a single part. And uh, it fits directly as the other would. And uh, the thing is, uh, with the roller saddles, you get much, much better tuning stability, as he said. And uh, also, not missing out on the part because it actually also looks better, in my opinion. Yeah, so again, pretty simple controls, volume and pickup selector as Paul Gilbert always did on the PGMs. I think some had some had a tone controller, I'm not quite sure. 
Okay, as far as the compartment goes, we don't have a lot to show. Yeah, it's the trim arm. And it's also a stick-in trim arm, which I love. But the original Wilkinson that was on here also had this. Wilkinson doesn't do screw-in. Um, according to the back side of the guitar, we got those very nice Grover, uh, Grover locking tuners. Oh, excuse me, not Grover, Goto locking tuners. And something really special about this guitar, it's, I mean, it's an RG. Most RGs usually have this wizard style, um, very thin neck. What this guitar has, it's really chunky neck. It's not, I mean, it's not super chunky, but Paul Gilbert sometimes quoted that he really likes those chunky necks. And that is a very special thing because when you want an RG guitar with a chunky neck, this is pretty much the only way you can go, except for the customs and all that. Really cool. Uh, yeah, we also got a tilt neck joint, but um, we we don't have uh, the classic uh, super axis kind of RG style thing. That's pretty much taken over from the old RG 550 that Paul Gilbert used to play, which also the uh, PGM originates from. And uh, yeah, we got our back cavities. Also, the wood figuring looks really nice, and uh, it's all lacquered. Also, those those things are. Uh, I think they're glued on, but they're lacquered over. So it just feels perfect. And the guitar itself is also in perfect shape, which is the main reason why I bought it. And uh, never had a Paul Gilbert signature model. So that's that. Okay, so on to our next guitar. Now this one is a very special one for me because um, the guitarist, this is the signature model for, is uh, has always been one of my biggest idols in guitar playing is also member of one of my favorite bands ever. So some of you are gonna laugh now when they see what guitar it is, uh, but um, I just love them, love that guy. Uh, watched every interview with him, would really like to meet him. Really cool guy. All right, so I already unpopped the case because uh, those Toman cases, uh, sometimes a little bit, uh, yeah, rigid. Oh, and also a uh, little disclaimer, uh, that guitar, when I bought it, it uh, was in a totally terrible shape. It had its tuners missing, the tremolo was all fucked up, and uh, I actually restored it. So when I bought it, I ordered the parts with it pretty much on the same day. And uh, I didn't want to show it until at least I, I assembled it, because uh, <laughs> then it would have just been some bare bones guitar. I didn't like that, so you see the, the, the outcome now. All right, so what guitar is it? I yeah, said the case, not so. Yeah, that's right. It's a Ibanez, Ibanez, sorry, RBM series. So what is an RBM model? RBMs are the Rap Beach models. In case you're not familiar with Rap Beach, he's the guitarist or was the guitarist. No, he is the guitarist still in Winger which is one of my absolute favorite bands. He's also the guitarist in Whitesnake at the moment, uh, but um, which is also one of my favorite bands, by the way. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I do like him for Winger because he's only used this in Winger as far as I can remember. I didn't use it in Whitesnake. But this guitar is modeled after a Sir guitar he actually does use these days, which looks pretty much the same, but it uh, doesn't have this, this cut here. And um, yeah, it's a really special guitar. So what, what is this? As you can see, tuners pretty much new. These are the original tuners. It was too easy to get those by, but I wanted to restore it to original. But I also um, uh, uh, wanted to look at brand new because like I said, I, I totally adore this guitar. So locking saddle, we got two stacked or dual rail single coils and a humbucker. And uh, as tremolo, we got, sadly, got the low TRS, no, excuse me, the, the uh, how is it called again? Oh, yeah, no, it's, it is the low TRS, low TRS 2. So one of those Korean made things. Those trams are not bad as for what they are, but the materials are kind of inferior. And uh, if you use them too much, they uh, probably will break or break in the sense of uh, being always out of tune. This one is in a really good condition uh, like material wise but it was totally scuffed up had to polish it down like 60 times until it retained that shine that it has now mirror pickguard volume knob pickup selector and splitter for this thing here 
it doesn't no that, yeah that's pretty much it that's all it doesn't have a tone red doesn't didn't need this it also got the barrel output barrel jack that's very nice uh, like i said this korean made and uh, you can also get uh, japanese made ones but the problem is i really wanted the nature one usually the the big japanese ones they have a core top uh, those are really expensive the rbm nt2 you can't really afford those or I'm not willing to pay that price for those. So um, yeah, this is what I went with. And uh, those things with the natural top, it doesn't matter if they're Korean or Japanese, they are really rare. Don't see that many in Germany actually. And uh, those are the only ones that appeal to me because those are the ones um, Rap himself played a lot. I mean, he's also could also be seen with the blue ones and uh, the, the black ones, but that's really where it is. Also got the tram arm here. And uh, just a little glance at the back side. Like I said, tuners are completely new, but it's the original Ibanez tuners that were used back then. Yeah, you can see the locking, it doesn't have anything on the neck. Um, yeah, these axis heel joints, a few scratches here, but condition wise, it's actually pretty okay. And the back plate cavity, and uh, yeah, the, the cutout for the output jack. That, that's pretty much it. It's a great guitar, sounds really cool, and uh, like I said, Red Beach, one of my absolute all-time favorite guitarists, had to head this. Okay, and for our last one for today, also a signature guitar, uh, we're gonna move to the Japanese side of things. So we had a Indonesian-made, Korean-made, 90s, and uh, now we have a Japanese-made Ibanez, which all Ibanez should be, in my opinion. And uh, as you can already tell by the case, it's an Ibanez Prestige case, so uh, yeah, you can expect cool things to come out there. Alright, so this signature guitar is also by one of my absolute favorite, favorite guitarists. And uh, this is pretty much what this was in, because somehow all my favorite guitarists play Ibanez guitars. That's kind of strange, and some, some play Thunders, but um, yeah. Let's have a look at this little guitar. Ready? Yeah, that's right. It's an Ibanez Gem VBK 77. Uh, amazingly gorgeous guitar. Um, let's let's do a little bit a little bit of flyover. So, it is a gem. It has the Vine style inlays, Tree of Life, whatever you want to call it. It is, being a Japanese gem, has the um, scalloped uh, four frets up here. It actually, the spec wise, it's pretty much like the white gem that Steve Vai plays, that one that sold for two and a half thousand dollars, I think. Those are a little bit cheaper, even though they are spec wise the same, because, um, yeah, you know, it's not the thing he plays, or he plays mostly, He's he has been seen playing this one, but, um, yeah. So, mirror pickguard. Um, these are Dimasio Breed, not Evolution. Uh, similar voicing, but not the same pickups, and they sound different, but uh, really cool in my opinion. Also cool thing, uh, this being a 2010 model, it has the uh, classical Edge Pro. Oh no, the classical Edge, excuse me, classical Edge. It doesn't have the Edge Pro. Somehow people prefer this. I'm really indifferent about this, but um, yeah, that's just how it is. So... What this guitar also has, what I really like about it, it has binding. It looks so ungodly gorgeous. I'd say it's even more beautiful than the white one, even though the white one is pretty much the classic when it comes to Steve Bay. So yeah, both are cool, kind of. Okay, um, now taking a little look at the back, like we always do. You have Godot tuners, non-locking obviously, because that would be kind of waste. Five piece neck. This axis joint. And uh, yeah, the, the standard uh, cavities for your electronics and uh, um, tremolo adjustment. Overall condition of this guitar is pretty good, but the reason why I picked it up a little bit cheaper is because it has this one ungodly ugly flaw. It didn't damage the binding or anything, but uh, it did damage the um, 
the uh, black um, uh, lacquer. Maybe I'm gonna find someone who can refinish this for me or at least touch this up so it looks like new. I mean, if you're good with, uh, with, with this, you can pretty much let this thing disappear. Um, let's see about this. And also, thing that we always like about those little bit more expensive guitars, case candy. What do we get? Just gonna mix up. So we have this Team J-Craft little kind of casing here that was sadly a little bit broke on the side, but I fixed it up just before this vid. The classical edge tram arm, very nice. And uh, yeah, the zipper bag, just... So the zipper bag, what does it have in here? It has the original hang tag with the quality inspection. GM 77V BK. It does have new rings for the tremolo so that it uh, yeah does what it should. It has the actual um, barcode for the case that was made in the US. It's funny, Ibanez produces cases in the US and Gibson doesn't even, as a US brand, doesn't even do that. Uh, also inspection card, very nice. And the trem block. Uh, no, excuse me, not the trim block, it's it's the trim spring block so that the springs don't pop out. Uh, don't know why, I didn't why, why the owner didn't install this. Probably changed strings quite often, I don't know. I'm gonna install this when I'm due with the first string change on this one. Okay, so that's it. Now wrapped up those three signature models of those three guitarists I totally yeah, admire in any way.